First set, Monica Seles to serve. Play. We're going to start the match. Chanda Rubin, Monica Seles, Monica to serve in the far court. I still believe, Kathleen, that Monica Seles is the cleanest ball striker in the game. 15 left. She had a lot of power before, but with this fitness, new fitness level, she's, she's hitting the ball even harder than she has. 30 miles. Second point, 101 mile per hour ace. I don't know if she's hitting it so much harder, but she's getting to it earlier, so she's got time to line up. So that gives it the increased pace. Shea Stadium, where the Mets play in LaGuardia Airport. Game Sellers. Game Sellers. She will take the very first game of the match. So you mentioned she is playing better tennis than you've seen her first play game. maybe in her career, but she has run against a bit of a ceiling. As I mentioned, she's lost to the top, the top players in a lot in the late rounds of a lot of recent tournaments. As I mentioned, Venus Williams in San Diego, New Haven, Davenport, Stanford, and William Wimbledon, Mary Pierce at the French Open. So she's got to raise her game a level to get by those four seeds, five seeds right ahead of her. Absolutely, and that's what's so interesting about Monica. She doesn't lose to lesser ranked players. I mean, so far this year, she was out with that injury to her foot for a very long time, from the end of last year up until February. She comes in her very first tournament, Oklahoma City, she wins it. Oh. And there she beat, she beat Amanda Kutzer, Natalie Deshi. And as you said, she's only lost to Davenport, Hingis, Pierce, everybody else, even Moresmo, people like that she's beaten. Chanda Rubin for a second. She's not a, she's not a neophyte here. This is her 10th appearance. What kind of game is she going to throw at Salas this morning? Well, as I said, what Chanda Rubin's got is a huge heart. She's willing to stay out there and fight as long as she needs to. I like that play from Chandler Rubin, the certain volley coming in. We didn't used to see that from her. Speaking of that, this goes three sets. In these humid, sort of hot conditions, if the sun does come through the clouds, it gets very hot right down the, there on the court. How's Celis going to hold up? That's the problem. <laughs> it's those long three-set matches that draw out Monica that she tends to give way on. Well, we're all tennis lovers. If we hope for as much tennis as we can, we'll have to see. Chanda herself was sidelined for a very 40, long time. 15. She had a wrist problem. She had surgery on it, and the surgery really didn't work, and she was had a cast on it. She missed a great deal of time. So for the last couple of years, she's been mounting her own comeback. women among the two nicest women on the tour. Chanda Rubin comes from an incredibly solid family. Her father was a judge, her mother a teacher. They really instilled great values in her. She's from Lafayette, Louisiana. She's got a charity event that she's involved with down there. And Monica said it's beloved out here. She talked to her in one of her press conferences. She sees some of the same, a good handful or more of the same same fans at every single tournament who just follow her around. The New York crowd, very supportive of her. That's a nice new 
edition of Celis' game. Look at this. We're two games into the match, and both players have been to the net. I'm stunned. <laughs> As we looked at that replay, you mentioned how that she's one of the cleanest hitters. You've seen very minimal movement yep. out there on that volley. Just the slightest. Not a big wind-up at all. It's all in front of her. It's all in the follow -through. And you just saw that, the cleanliness so of that see, shot. That's the shot that Caroli Sellis taught his daughter, that even when you're jammed or even when you're on the run, you take one spot, pick it, and go for it. Well, we're on serve here in the first. Monica Sellis ahead by one game, two to one. Monica Sellis got here in the first round over Tracy Almeida Singin from Sanford, Florida. Six love, six two. Then Ann Kramer in straight sets, six two, six four. Chanda Rubin over Asa Carlson of Sweden, straight sets, then Barbara Shett in three. That was a good win for Chanda Rubin over Barbara Shett, because Barbara Shett was a seeded player here last year. Hasn't had the kind of season that she did in 1999. I like that play from Monica. Celis, should she advance here on a crash course? With Hingis. With Hingis, who only made four unforced ah. errors in her match the other night against Christina Brandy. That's Something to behold. Well, you know what, but that's actually a better draw for Monica than having to face Lindsay or Venus or Serena, because they actually can overpower her. What Hingis can do is maneuver the ball so well around the court that she will exhaust Zellis. Chanda Rubin to serve here, fourth game of the match. It's funny, if, and Hingis said, you know, you shouldn't be ready this early in the tournament. She, she mentioned in a press tournament, people had kept asking her about those unforced errors. She said, you know, it's, it's a little early. Look at how far back Celis is forcing Ruben to play. That's not Ruben's comfort zone. Love the team. These two, by the way, have among my two favorite coaches in all of tennis. Bobby Bank works with Monica Sellis, and a man named Benny Sims, who used to be the head pro at the Longwood Cricket Club in Boston, works with Chanda. You couldn't have two nicer people. ready to play. Well, they've both been around the blocks a long time. <laughs> Ruben was a real prodigal child when she came on board. There was some question as to whether she would stay in school or turn pro. And Martina Hingis saying, you know, it's, it's early in the tournament to be really on top of your game, but maybe one of those reasons is she's playing so much tennis here. She's playing doubles with Mary Pierce. She's playing mixed doubles with Jan Michael Gamble and singles.
Boy, Ruben's tried a lot of different tactics in only three and a half games, and none of them are working. A couple break points. Our first break here in the first set going to Monica Sellis. She'll serve up 3 1. Honestly, Kathleen, I'm not quite sure what Benny Sims and Chanda Rubin talked about in terms of a tactic for this match. If I were Benny, I probably would have had to see Chanda working the ball around, trying to mix up the pace and get Sellis off her guard. I'm not sure I'd be trying to face her at the net. But that's what everybody's been talking about regarding Monica is that she's quicker around the court. She's got more maneuverability. She's also got a new outfit. Well, I was just going to mention to you, should, should Chanda be really moving her back and forth, not yeah. only up to the net and back, but, but, but from line to line? Yeah, 106 mile per hour ace. That is a new addition to Celis' game. sure about that call. That's the second time we've seen a player basically not play a ball. She moves very fluidly around the court, you see, and that's what she wants. But if she's going to miss a lot of the volleys, even that wasn't good enough. Look at the way she backed up. Very good, solid play. She's got her side turned as she runs, so she doesn't have to do a 360 once she gets there. Or a 180, anyway. Bunch <laughs> <laughs> of degrees in there. So. Yeah, there's a lot of circling around. <laughs> 30 all. That's another thing about playing Celis. You feel you have to be perfect. So you have to go for the lines when she probably could have just moved it inside a little bit. She had to look like she wanted that break back right away. But 40-30. Game Celis. She's up 4-1 here in the first. Celis leads four games to one. Have you spoken to her at all? Do you get a sense of, uh, let's forget the conditioning for a second and having to work on her strength and all that. What, what's her mental state like? Is, does, is she, do you feel she's as hungry as she was before and she really believes that she can get back to her former level of success? You know, I was nodding my head yes, and then of course there's that element of doubt in my head and I think in her head as well. I don't think she would be putting this in, all of this effort, if she wasn't. When I was with her, it was a question as to whether she would make the Olympic team because she was 14 in the world and Jennifer Capriati was 15, and you knew she wanted that more than anything else all year. Does she truly believe that she's going to beat consistently Venus and Serena? No, I don't think she does. And I think that's probably the biggest problem is that she's scared of them. I think at this stage of her career, she's almost 27 years old, which is still so young, but she's been through so much. And I don't think she believes when she gets into the latter stages of a tournament, and when you look at her record this year, on a hard court in Tokyo, Hingis, 7664. Hingis again in Scottsdale, 3 and 3. 
Venus Williams, one and two. The best match she played. Tough. She has a win over Serena, but it kind of doesn't count because Serena le left in the middle of the match with that injury. Now, when you look at that, that was just almost just a couple of weeks ago. Monica Salas on the left, Chanda Rubin on the right. Chanda Rubin to serve. She's down a break here in the first. She's serving at 1-4. I have to correct myself, she does not have a win over Serena. I was thinking of the three setters she played in the final in San Diego against Venus, and that's a perfect example of what you mentioned before. She won, lost the first set, won the second in a tiebreak, and just didn't have enough gas left in the third and ended up losing at 6-3. Well, well, let me ask you, in terms of, again, running into sort of butting her head against the wall in terms of those top players, you think as she gets perhaps more fit gets and uh, gets a little bit closer, that confidence will build? I'm not sure she can lose any more weight, so I I don't know. But that was part of the problem. She wasn't content to be a middling top 10 player. She wants to be right up there fighting with them. Consider that in her last five tournaments, her only losses have been to Davenport and Venus Williams. She lost to Davenport in the quarters at Wimbledon. Lindsay again on hard courts in the semis at Stanford. Then again, she lost to, I mean, then she lost to uh, Venus in San Diego and then Venus again in New Haven. Game. Not to dwell too much on the women and the weight issue, but I, I would beg to differ with you. I think that she can still slim down a little bit. So you can see a lot of sort of meat on her arms, her upper arms here, kind of around her middle. But you're tough. You're tough. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm running the New York City Marathon. I went to the gym the other day, and I picked up a 15-pound weight, and I thought, you know what? This is what you, so there's the extra stuff you carry around with you. And you just, just an extra half of a second moving side to side, back and forth in the court, and helping your endurance, you know, that could be part of the difference. She's so mentally tough. She's such a smart player. She's got the whole game. You know, Hingis has been talking a lot in press conferences about, hey, listen, I may not be all that strong, but I'm smart. You yeah, know? she is, and, she's and, right. and, and yeah. tennis is not just about hitting the ball hard. So it'll be interesting to see how this whole mind-body thing plays out. Uh, in terms of well, the Williams sisters and the other women on the tour. Well, because the Williams sisters are so fit, particularly Venus. Monica's funny. She said, you know, I don't eat as much as my friend Mary Jo, and she's really skinny. <laughs> so she is a We all have friends around. that have. <laughs> They're like you. I do that. No, not me. No, she is acutely aware of it, believe me. She knows every single thing that she puts in her mouth. We had a, an hour and a half together, and I think she drank lemonade. Thirty love. Game set. Game set. She's up five two here in the first. So yeah, we can talk more games to two. as uh, play goes on here about just the mental toughness of each player on the tour, which fascinates me. And I love watching more and more women on the tour be so competitive and be so, not only with the things that they say in the press conferences about other players and how their, how their game is, but just in terms of changing their game on the court, not folding their tent and going home. Uh, I just think it's great. I think it's great for women's tennis. It's great for me as a fan. So what's Chanda thinking at the moment? She's thinking, I've got to figure out a way to take her off her guard, to make her misstep. And she's going to have to throw in some drop shots. She's going to have to throw in some spins, some slices and dices a little bit, which isn't really her game. Her game is somewhat one of banging a little bit. 
She's come into the net eight, eight times, but only won two of those points. Yeah, and Sellis is three for three, so I think she's got to back off from that. But here's what you have to know about Chanda Rubin's sort of mental fortitude and her staying power. At the 96 Australian Open, she was playing Arancha Sanchez Vicaria. She won it 6-2, 6-4, 2-6, 16-14. It was the longest women's match ever at the Australian Open. It lasted three hours and 33 minutes on a hard court. The last set alone was two hours and 22 minutes. Chanda Rubin to serve, to stay in the first set here. She's down 2-5. Seats quickly, please, behind the players. Thank you. Chanda also had the longest match at Wimbledon. Back in 1995, I remember she was playing Patricia Hebule. Net. That one was 7 6, 6 7, 17 15. Set the record for most games in a women's Grand Slam singles match 58 games. Hui. <laughs> <laughs> is that a New York? It's a New York thing. Isn't it? <laughs> in that one, the last set, two hours and four minutes. Most games in a set. Fourth longest match in the open era. I mean, it was unbelievable. That one was three hours and 45 minutes. So she'll, she'll hang around as long as she needs to. There's an example there. She did get the net cord, but uh, I, would I would think she would learn perhaps from that point right there. Monica just slow, getting herself up to the net. She was caught off guard, obviously, but just wasn't there to do anything with the ball. 30 love. deal with those bodies real close into the, excuse me, those balls hit real close into the body. Well, that's where she is so compact, and that's because the two hands, she can rein them in. And that's what's so great. Her agility is, is unbelievable, and that's all taught Game by Corey Sellis. Ruben holds. 5-3, Sellis up. She'll serve for the first set. Sellis leads five games to give you one more example of Ruben's as if fortitude. the last one wasn't a good enough one, <laughs> but go ahead. Here. Here's one where I had to remember when and where it was. 1995 French Open playing Yana Novotna. I was like to wait till the end of the point. Third set, she was down. Love five, love 40. She fought off nine match points. She eventually reached the quarters. That was the first time ever at a Grand Slam for her. And that was one of those matches that earned Yana Novotna the choking moniker. There's some mental toughness for you. I think you've proven your point. <laughs> seen any evidence here in this game of her trying to mix it up. No. <laughs> Ruben's only 24 years old. She turned pro right here at age 15. <laughs> she came in with a very set game plan. And she's going to take it to see if she can work it out. Because you saw her, the chip and charge return. Chanda, one of nine players from the United States in the third round here on the women's singles draw. But the men are fading fast, led by Andre yes, Agassi's departure. A lot of fans very sorry to see him go yesterday. Number one seed in three sets to Clement. Game is 
set sets. Marcus Ellis takes the first set. 6-3 from Chandler Rubin, 25 minutes. Six games to play. This is the fifth anniversary of the Monica Sella Steffi Graf U.S. Open Final. It took place here in 1995. It was the first Grand Slam final and only the second tournament that Monica had played since her absence from the tour, 1993. Well, the first one was in Canada. Her first match back was an exhibition against Martina Navratilova in Atlantic City. She played then in Canada and she won the tournament. It was just an unbelievable run. When Monica Sells came back on the grounds here, Kathleen, the din was unreal from the crowd. And I asked her about that because remember, when Monica first started playing, people didn't like her. She had a grunt. She, you know, was severe looking. And as she said, she played against the darling of the tour, Jennifer Capriati. She said she was so glad when Capriati came on the tour because when she first started, there was no one her age, no one talked to her. That's where she earned this sort of elusive reputation because there were no other kids. Then suddenly Capriati appeared and she wanted to be friends with Jennifer. Take a look at that point. Just catching the line. Her timing is just impeccable. Summary of the first set here. Chanda Rubin, first serve percentage up at 67%, and Monica's 52%. Ah. Not a great. Well, t the 10 winners make the difference and break points. No double falls from either player. Just a couple of aces. But you know, even I think the stats belie the facts in this one because I clearly felt as if Sells dominated that first set. Sure. 25 minutes in, we're going to start the second set. Chanda Rubin to serve, on the top of your screen. 24-year-old American. is a high school graduate, graduated with honors. Her brother is a collegiate player at Louisiana State University, and I saw him last year at the NCAA Championships. They were in the team semifinals. He collapsed, cramping in the match, and had to be carried off. It was a terrible moment. Both parents were there. Chandler grew up liking Yvonne Lendl, admiring him. Remember she, him? Yeah, <laughs> he was a good friend of mine. Now playing a lot of golf. He's done it very well. He's on like a celebrity pro circuit. He's also got five daughters, one of whom, the oldest, Marika, he says is turning into be a little bit of a player. 30-15. Yeah. So she's got to be in at the net. She can't do that split step and wait because she gives Sellers all the time and all the room. 11 times she has come to the net, only won four of those points. But have we seen a drop shot? Have we seen a lob? I don't think so. No, but there's a little side of me that likes what I'm seeing from Chana because it means that at age 24, she is trying to change her game. Yes. Listen. By the way, here's why she likes Lendl. She liked his on-court demeanor and everything else, his work ethic, but she loved his dry sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that's the first thing I think of when I think of Yvonne Lendl. Oh, nice shot there. Nice deep backhand from Chandler. 43. Game move. Chandler holds serve. Take the first game of the second first set. Game. Second set. Match just 30 minutes old. Monica Sellis having take the f taken the first 6 3. Ruben is involved in so many charitable activities everything from the Girls and Women's in Sports Day to anti drug programs to clinics for kids, minority participation, Leukemia Foundation, Diabetes Association, Epilepsy Foundation. She's amazing.
Marcellus really mixing it up well now. 15 left. She was very funny. She said, you know, people don't perceive me so differently on the court and off the court. I look so focused and concentrated under my hat. 30 left. And she is a charming, charming young woman. Thirty love. Talk a little bit about Monica Sellis' extracurricular activities. <laughs> Partner in the All Star Cafe, which is a sports restaurant chain with Andre Agassi, Tiger Woods, Shaquille O'Neal, Joe Montana. Wayne Gretzky, Ken Griffey. Forty-fifteen. Learning to speak French. Third ace of the match. One game on. One apiece. an opening that Sellis is taking a very close look at. Correction ball is good. Oh boy, such a dicey point. Well, overruled by the chair umpire. Chan is not going to like that at all. Well, there are the two viewpoints. Heard it clearly. Let's take another look. It's a tough time for it to happen at Love 30 down. I think. I think it was wide. I, it's, I, I don't know. Chanda said she thought she saw space between the line and the ball. Didn't even catch any of it. on the defensive on both of those points. That one was set up by a 102 mile per hour serve from Ruben. Stairs from Sellis, and she's chastising herself. 
was so funny, we'll have to watch her on the other changeover. She's been talking to herself <laughs> almost constantly when she sits down on the changeovers. I said that she was a walking run-on sentence. <laughs> and once she gets going, the thoughts spill out of her so fast her words can't quite catch up. Fascinated by the color of drinks here at the US Open. Yeah, you am, are. You, I you, am. You, <laughs> Have I mentioned that every time? You're on a mission here. I am. And I, Monica's I just drinking get, water. She's just drinking water. We've gone from tangerine to yellow to pale yellow to blue to bright blue to pink. Just looking down at Monica Sellis's friend's box. Bobby Bank is there, her mother Esther, and Betsy Nagelson. Former touring pro, married to the chairman of IMG, Mike McCormick, and one of Monica's best friends. It was Betsy Nagelson and Mark McCormick who really picked up Sellis. As you see, she's chatting with herself. <laughs> they picked her up after that stabbing and brought her back to life. They have really sort of been part, become part of her family and been very supportive of her and all of her efforts, both tennis and outside of tennis. We're in the second set here. Monica Sellis to serve. We're on serve. Mary Jo Fernandez is also one of Sellis' best friends. Just married herself yep. to an IMG boy, Tony Gatsik. And, and at their wedding, Monica was a bridesmaid, and she showed me the pictures. Very pink. <laughs> oh, she looked lovely. She spent an entire Red week down in Florida getting ready for the wedding, and she said it was the best week of her life. She just had so much fun. My favorite part is that Mary Jo was concerned about Monica walking in big high heels at the wedding. And about halfway through, she said, Monica, how are you holding up in those heels? You're really doing great. Monica says, I feel great. At which point, she lifted up the bottom of her dress, sneakers underneath. <laughs> <laughs> Smart girl. <laughs> Still sort of thinking, still thinking, okay. Trying to come to net there again. Seven of those points. But as I said, on the one level, I really admire her willingness to adapt something new in her game. So many players just say that this is how I play and take it or leave it. I do think she should be mixing it up because it's not working today. just eating those Four short balls from Chanda for lunch. And once she gets that advantage, she's just pushing Chanda back and back and back. Well, they are on serve in the second. Game Sellers. Game Sellers to all. Ruben had a win last year in Two Indian Wells. Up. Huge event over Martina Hingis. It was a tremendous moment for Chanda. She'd also beaten Amanda Kutzer, Conchita Martinez. She got to the semifinals. It was the first semifinal at a tier one event on the women's tour, which are the top level underneath the Grand Slams since Miami in 1996. And that was where she injured her hand originally. Team 
the one danger in playing Ruben is that you do know that you can never take anything for granted. And even if you win this first set easily, and even if you're cruising in the second, nothing is assured. Ruben and Sandrine Testu last year went all the way to the final of the women's doubles here. They lost to the Williams sisters. They had never played together. They were a pickup team at the start of last year. playing together again this year. They're the fourth seeds. They're next up against Nadia Petrova and Patty Schneider. Very enjoyable to watch Martina Hingis pull out her doubles win the other night. Excuse me, did I say Martina Hingis? I was going to say, Martina. did you mean Deborah Tolova? You know, we've got a different Martina now. Yeah. And, uh, and I, uh, there you I say Martina, there was one, and now there are two. And uh, Martina Navratilova pull out her doubles win the other night with Arancha Sanchez Vicario. The crowd, extremely supportive. <laughs> Maniacal, would you say? Maybe. She couldn't have looked happier to be playing more tennis here at the US Open. Well, that's what brought her back. They're unseated here. She's got a wild card, right? She's playing mixed doubles, I believe, as well. And she's got good partners for both. She's playing with Amanda Pays. And she's so dumb. <laughs> 3-2, here in the second. Three games to two. Jane Rubin will take a little sustenance. A banana from her bag. There are a lot of those banana breaks on the tour these days. <laughs> Is that what we're calling them, banana breaks? <laughs> That's what I call them. <laughs> You know, we say the Williams sisters so many times, it's starting to sound like the, like the Andrews sisters, you know, a singing <laughs> group, doesn't it? Let's see if Monica's still chatting to herself. Yep. And if you told her about it, she'd have no idea. You know, she was completely unaware of that grunt that she was so maligned for with the grunt to meter and everything else. I remember the one time she tried to stop doing it in the final of, of Wimbledon, she got killed. How do you think you go to non-grunt school? How do you get rid of a grunt? <laughs> you ah. think a lot about it, which means you're not thinking about your shots. Three aces apiece for Chanda Rubin and Monica Sellis. We're here in the second set on serve. Monica Sells to serve, two to three. She's taken the first set, six games to three. Here in the third round, still a little overcast, so we see a few patches of blue sky here, probably about 75 to 80 degrees. Expected to get up between 80 and 85 today. And humid. As you can see, both players telling themselves off over the, in the changeovers, having a lot to drink. Yes. 
personal. Twelve unforced errors now for Sellis. A little bit scratchy. That's Benny Sims, Chanda Rubin's longtime coach. He's talking to himself. Benny happy with what he's seen so far. We're still on serve here in the second. Three games all. Three games all. Wait, if you put Benny Sims and Monica Sells in a room together, you could just <laughs> shut the door and come back three days later. Add Brad Gilbert in, and you might as well come back three months later. But you get the feeling there'd be two humans in there, but really four people. <laughs> They must be talking to somebody. We wouldn't serve. Next. Person. That's great play from Chanda. That's a more thoughtful approach to coming in. It's not reckless. You know, she's got to make her approach shots work as well as just her volleys. We're definitely making Celis work now. So the sun come out through the clouds just a little. Whoa, yeah. baby, a serve by the winners. There we go. Four games to three. Ruben leads four games Ruben to in the three. Third, in the second. Too late to see what a uh, little bit of that little spark there, a little flare from Chanda Ruben. Oh, definitely not too late. I mean, she's a 4-3 in the second set. She's one break of serve away from taking this to three sets. Now, I don't think for one second Monica feels as if she's out of danger or the Chanda Rubin feels that she's out of the match. Starting to file in. She's still a lot of tennis going out or out going on around here on the grounds. A lot of doubles going on. Well, Sandrine Testu has just taken out Christy Bugard. Six love, six one. Wow. Alex Gorecha took the first set from Mark Rose, 6-3. Six, three. Ah. Natalie Tosia is one game away from taking out Janet Lee. Natalie Tosia at 32 years old, the oldest woman in the draw here. Probably the saddest, now that she's been ousted by the French Federation, participating in the Olympic Games. It's kind of had a tough year, too, coming out with a book that was certainly controversial. Well, that's why they ousted her from the Olympic team. Players refused to compete with her. That's why I mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't 
feel at all as if she's out of this match, Kathleen. Zella serving. First point, though, goes to Chandler. Do you think that was fair? What was done to Tezziat? Oh, absolutely not. I think it's horrific. And as Billie Jean King said, she was involved in a real controversy with Lisa Raymond. And she said she doesn't choose her team based on the opinions of the other players. And you know what? I think it's a, it, I think it's a pity. I think it's unjust. And I think it was foolish because Natalie Toziadi is the second best French player. It is a shame. It is a shame. She had an opportunity with a short ball. She can't let those pass by. The sun is bright now here on Arthur Ashe Stadium. 30-15. Monica Sellers to the net for with seventh a, time. And a one-handed volley. 40-50. Take another look. Again, the slightest, smallest, most beautiful, simple movement. 40-15. Game sells. Game sells for all here in the second. Four games on. We haven't even seen a break point in this set. Natalie Toziad has won her match with Janet Lee, 6-3, 6-2. fault from either player here in the match. That was a successful trip to the net for Chandra Rubin. She's come in 20 times. She's won 11 of those points. Well, at least she's now over 50%. She's playing much better, much better. You can tell she has late raised the level of her game, but you know Monica's right on top of that. just a little bit. 30, 50. Well, you know what, Sellis had that. She had it lined up perfectly. The ribbon was at the service line. It's going to be dead in the water. Next. Person. 30-15. Just get another first serve. We haven't seen a lot of loose points from Ruben lately.
Gabe Rubin, 5-4, on serve here in the second set. Rubin leads five games to four. Shall I mention that you're all dressed up today? Would you like to tell us where you're going after this match, madam? <laughs> you were just noticing the heels I and the was, skirt. I was. You're looking quite okay. fetching, this fetching is, as they say. Right. This is my day in the USTA box, as they call it, the former president's box. I haven't had a day yet there, actually. No one's even asked me to have a day there. I will see what I can do about that. It's 22 years of covering the U.S. Open. Uh, they. Yes, you deserve a day. <laughs> you deserve a week. A lot of sleepless nights, right? USTA President Judy Levering. Those boxes are beautiful. And they Absolutely give, beautiful. And they give you a fancy hat, so my husband is enjoying it right now. And my parents. Well, while I'm up here slaving away, <laughs> I'll make sure to keep an eye out down below. You hear my violin? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Janda Rubin's probably never been in the president's box either. I bet Monica Salas hasn't either. Yep, there she goes. I was going to be disappointed if we didn't see a conversation going on with Monica herself <laughs> there. Salas to serve here at 4-5 in the second set. I'm going to give you a dollar to go down and ask Monica what she's talking about. <laughs> I would love to know. I truly would. The match just a few minutes shy of one hour. Thank you. Sells has lost only nine points on her serve. Her serve percentage. 66%. Oh, pretty shot. Yeah, I'm not sure Sells a little bit intimidated right now by what she Love sees across team. the net. I don't think Chanda intimidated at all that Monica's only lost nine points on her serve. It doesn't seem to matter to her right now. Sellers retreats to the cornerstone of her game, which is, again, depth, pace, and maneuverability. This is as big an opening as Ruben has had on Celis' serve. Big point. laid out across the court. She, it's the one before that, the one right before she came to the net. She banged the ball. All she had to do, Monica was all jumbled up. Her feet were tangled. That's when you throw in a little drop shot, a little off speed. Thirty all. Second serve. Celis is tightening up the glass. Oh, yeah. A little louder, the ferocity with which she hits. And a great point for Chanda Rubin. That's an hour old. Thank you. First great point for Rubin in the match.
Vantage Rude. You see how far Chan back. That's a good play by Monica Chan. It just barely got there. Right at the body. You don't have time to get out of the way. You have to commit one way or the other. You're caught. Got the break point chance for Ruben. And a second serve. Sims liking what he sees, the inside out return winner up the line on set point. to having a little bit more banana, some unidentified pink liquid. It's a good effort by Ruben. First break opportunity of the match, and she sends a screaming inside out forehand winner up the line, and on a set point, no less, it's clutch play. Take a look at a summary of the second set. First serve percentages high for both players. Winners almost dead even. 12 for Ruben. 11 for Celis. Unforced errors dead even. Break points won. One of two for Ruben. They were both in the last game. She had those two opportunities there. The fact is it was a much higher level of play from both players. Both going off to change their shirts. It's extremely humid out. And now you will see the stands start to fill up as people sense a possible upset. That's one of the wonderful things. There's a, a brand new sort of giant screen TV here this year out near the food court, 17 feet by 24 feet. So. The buzz usually gets around these grounds from person to person when something's happening on one of the courts, whether it be an outer court or one of the main courts here. But that jumbo screen television really drives the point home, send people here into their seats. I was down on the court for about an hour yesterday, and it, it gets hot yeah. down there. It gets very, it bakes. You just feel, and if you take a look at some of the people in the stands here, you'll see some people fanning themselves, and they're up a good 40, 50 feet from the court. Well, they handed out fans as you walked in the gates today. Did they? <laughs> but now Monica Sellis is really going to have to think about it. It's not as if she gave up a lot of free points, but just a couple here and there. And that's all Ruben needs. The players coming back onto the court. We've been talking about the humidity here. They've both gone to change their shirts. Monica Sells put on some new wristbands too. Be 29,000 hours of television. Broadcast to 160 countries here at the US Open. There's Chanda Rubin comes back on to the court. 
Sutter. Welcome back to Arthur Ashe Stadium. Watching the match between Chanda Rubin and Monica Sellis. They have split sets. We are dead even. Monica Sellis took the first set six to three. Chanda Rubin taking the second, raising the level of her game. Really around uh, us. It was four all in the second set. She took it six four. She'll begin serving here in the third. Sellis in a third set. Well, we're going to find out. This is when she tends to struggle most, and you saw she barely made an effort on that last shot. week in New Haven. Sellis was taken to three sets by Natalie Tozia. She won it 6-1 in the third. Taken to three sets by Sandrine Testu. Won it in a third set tie break. And as I mentioned, taken to three sets by Venus Williams, which she lost. So she does have the ability to stay out there. Just the first one from Monica Sellis in the match. That's terrific play from Sellis. She created the opening, put Ruben out of position. 40, Ruben is almost off the court, and there is Sellis right on the line. Game Sellis. Game Sellis. One serve, one off here in the third. One game off. Picking it up a level now. So is Ruben for that matter, but Celis' level is a little higher.
15. Just a Kathleen, one of the things that Celis was saying to me is that she's by nature not a very good competitor. She said she would rather during a practice session hit ball after ball after ball and never play a set. I know everybody I said that to you looked at me incredulously. <laughs> My head snapped around. Well, I did the same thing to her. 30, 50. And she said she does compete. She said she would rather play just the Grand Slams. If every tournament could be a Grand Slam, she'd be very, very happy she'd play them for 10 years. But she said, it, you know, the rest of it's becoming a little bit of a grind, all the traveling and being in the same places. 40, 50. She said she actually feels badly if she starts to beat somebody, you know, love and love. I bet you're not that bad. <laughs> That's what I said. No! Although, did you tell me the other day that she has been known to just yeah, give a few games yeah. away? Which not now, I think not most people lately. would be very surprised to hear. Well, that's what she said. Except the problem is you start doing that and you get yourself in real trouble. Correction of all is good. And believe me, she's not giving any games away to Jane Rubin. Correction from the, the chair umpire. The ball was called out by the line person. Overruled by Stephanie Weedy. Forty fifteen. Oh. Game. Ruben holds. Two one in the third. Ruben leads two games to one. Yeah, Go. or mint or something. Or maybe some little form of energy boost. Monica Salas. Yeah, that looks like somebody who doesn't like to compete. <laughs> well, that's her expression <laughs> after the chair umpire overruled that that ball, that line call. Called it in. Winner of this match will take on either Jennifer Capriani or Adriana Gersi. Proud, very supportive of Capriati out here too. We just ran into her mother Denise on the grounds. I said, boy, Jennifer looks awfully cozy with Xavier Melise. And she said, yes, it's so sweet. They're Xavier so in Melise, love. Xavier a tennis player, of course, who is her boyfriend. And is in, still in the draw, too. Mama approves? Yep, very much so. Salas serving. 1-2 here in the third. Thanks. Second serve. Face shot from Monica Sellis. You're going to drop shot me. I'm going to get to the ball and I'm going to put it away. It's taken Chanda Rubin an hour and 15 minutes to throw in that drop shot. Good morning. 
wanted to sell us a short ball like that, and you say good night. You see Sells creating the opportunity, practically throwing Ruben off the court. Gets the short ball, and look at the way she lines it up. That was a backhand. Always confusing with Monica. 40 love. Just a second of a fault. 40 15 to even the match at 2 all here in the third. Two all here in the third set. Two games on. Around the grounds, Alex Corecha is a game away from taking a two sets to love lead on Mark Rosé. Corecha, by the way, is one of my picks who could win this tournament. Just letting you know that now. Okay, hold you to it. Arancha Sanchez Vicario is up a break in the first on Amanda Bradshaw. What a wonderful story Bradshaw is. Her mom, Val Ziegenfuss, one of the original nine players. Virginia Slim Circuit. Bobby Bank, you caught a look at Monica Sellis' coach. They have really stepped it up a level. This is becoming a fine match. How has Monica adjusted since the death of her dad? He was her coach, of course. And Great difficulty. Close and close friend. Well, she's become very protective of her mom, Esther, as we see in the box. It's triple break point here for Celis. She really takes care of her mother. She's also become very independent. Oh, Chandler saves one. Very deep forehand. Celis said, though, that there isn't a day goes by that she doesn't think of something that reminds her of her father. She said opening a can of Sprite because that was his favorite drink. Oh, with an ace. Trying to save his second break point. Huge ace, her fifth, 102 Two. miles per hour. Still a break point left for Monica to go up a break here in the third set. Tried another one. Just wide. <laughs> and she does break. Monica Sellis up one break here in the third set. Sellis leads three, two. three games to two. Next time Monica Sellis tries to tell me that she's not a competitive person, I'm going to point to that game right there at two all in the third set. Screaming ground stroke winners. She absolutely loves to play here. Set aside the relationship, the close relationship between Monica and her dad for a second. What was about, what was it about that pairing as a coach and a player that was so good, so strong? He made Monica? the game fun for her. He never. Um, from day one when he was painting, you know, Tom and Jerry cartoons on the balls so that she would hit those. <laughs> um, you know, you never saw anybody in the stands who would applaud for every good shot by both opponents. 
as you did with Carole. There's always a smile on his face. He was an immensely likable man. I remember there's always really a smile on his face for everyone. Yeah. Strangers on the ground, when he would walk in, he was very recognizable, yeah. would say hello to him or wish Monica luck. And always, always very open, very friendly, yeah. warm face. Well, he taught Monica to be that way. And then ah. there's, Esther is very private. In fact, when I was down there, Monica had to call Esther and say, well, can we come over to the house now? <laughs> We're here in the third set between Chanda Rube and the United States and Monica Sellis. Monica Sellis up one break. In the last game, in this third set, she will serve 3-2. One hour and 20 minutes here at Arthur Ashe Stadium. Warm, another warm, humid, muggy day in New York. Monica to serve. Love 15. Sellis looked down to see whether that ball would be in or out. I frankly thought it was in. And a second serve. I get the feeling Chanda very much wants this break back right now. for Sellis to come in. And now triple break point for Chanda Rubin. Thank you. Fight back even to three all. And she's missed every first serve in this game. Another second serve. Very forceful play from Ruben. She's now serving with new balls. See that first serve percentage for Monica Sellis here in the third set at 21%. Love her. China's got to keep her concentration here. Yeah, she played a perfect game. And then she slapped a couple of unforced errors.
Dallas leads four games to three. Four unforced errors in that game, and you can see why Chandra Rubin is demoralized. Can't be happy with that. Got to think. She's got to concentrate. She's got to put it behind her. It's just two games ago where she played that beautiful game and it got the break back. Celis. But I'm not sure she can put this one behind her because you don't get that many opportunities to break Monica Celis. When you do, you've got to capitalize on it. Look at the difference in their facial language right now. Ruben nearly distraught. Celis as focused as ever. Time. That says it right there. Frustration for Chanda. I'll take the court, and I'm sure she will try to break back. Again, Monica's up 4-3 here in the third. She will serve. <laughs> Stadium has really filled up. Comes to nearly three-quarter capacity. That's the end of this match. serve percentage from the last game she served. The fact that Celis tossed and retossed touches is just a sign of a slight loss of concentration. One of the last five, seven, six, seven serves, she hasn't gotten one in. There's the first. And look at the opportunity of the end. 30-15. She had to feel it slip away from her a little at this point, 30-15. Oh boy, it's all about the first serve with Celis now. Two first serves, two second points. 40 15 to go up 5 3. Here in the third
bold play from Ruben there to serve and volley at this stage of the match. And Sellis with the rollover, Ruben trying to pick it up. She's worked hard in this match. Remember, she is not out of this. Oh, no, and she doesn't think she is now. Two games ago, on the changeover, she may have felt she was. But remember, she knows that she's broken Celis. She knows that she's had opportunities on her serve. And the bottom line for Celis is first serves in. got to that ball, but she knew that was the last one she was going to get in that point. Well, at that point, Ruben was wise because she didn't have to do too much with the volley. Ah. And we're in the third set to Monica Sellis and Chanda Ruben. Monica Sellis up 5-4 here in the third set. She will serve for the match. fastest of the day. In fact, it was her fastest, 105 miles per hour. Two points for the match. she has been able to do with her serve in the last two games after having so much trouble is tremendous. Thank you. Thank you. Two chances to take the match for Monica Salas. Another second serve. Over Chanda Rubin, 